So probably about four or five years ago, I first read somewhere probably online, maybe in a magazine, but probably online, that hostas were edible. Now I have lots of hostas, all different varieties. I'll show you some of them today. They're just beginning to emerge from the ground. Some in the warmer places of my yard are already leafed out, but most of them are still just barely poking out of the ground. Several years ago, many years ago actually, when Matt and I first moved into our house and um, I wanted to put flowers in my yard, we were on a very tight budget. In fact, we had no budget. That's, why, that's what kind of budget we had. We just had the girls. We lived in our house two days before I had them. So two twin babies at home and just starting out in life together as a married couple. Matt was the only one with the income, so things were very tight. So I loved flowers, but any kind of flowers that I got had to be free. They had to come from somebody. Well, of course, Granny shared lots of flowers with me. Uh, my aunt down the road shared flowers with me. Different people would. Um, and one of my aunts who didn't live down the road, who actually lived in Canton, where I met Matt when Matt lived in Canton, she was as crazy about flowers as I was at that time. And so she shared tons of flowers with me. I had to bring them. You know, I'd, every time I'd make a trip to Canton, I'd fill up the back of my car with plants. She was so generous to share the ones that she had with me. And many of the ones that she had were hostas. She liked hostas. And she didn't, if you're familiar with hostas, you've probably seen the ones that get really big. Maybe you've seen them. If you don't have them at home, maybe you've seen them outside of a, a business or a restaurant or something like that. Uh, they're pretty hardy plants, so they're one that people like to use in in, uh, landscape and things like that because they're pretty hardy but so she had all different varieties though all different colors uh, from the just the regular green big leafed ones to like gold ones variegated ones um, just lovely and she also had miniature miniature hostas all different varieties of them so she was so generous with me that she shared all a piece of all of them with me uh, and so over the years now you know 25 22 whatever it is years later um, mine are huge and they've spread they've multiplied over the years if hostas are in a happy place where they like they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and a lot of mine really need to be dug up and divided and put other places but I don't really have any other place to put them but even where I I clean off the every year you know clean off my flowers and all that where I've thrown the seed pods in the woods I even have hostas growing in the woods so anyway when I first saw that hot this come across this that hostas were edible I thought well that's really interesting if I ever had to I would have a ready food supply there would be my hostas well this year and ever since 2020 we've all thought about food more now we've always grown a garden and always tried to be self-sufficient but you always knew that you could go to the grocery store and get food if you if you needed to uh, and i still can do that today i'm not saying that you can't but it's still it's just more mindful i think in all of our minds thinking to be better prepared and maybe um, just to feel a little bit safer about your food supply so over the years, I have like snapped off a hosta and chewed on it and thought, well, it tastes pretty good, you know, but then I kind of forget about it. So today, though, I'm going to actually harvest them and try cooking them. Um, now, when I've snapped them off and tasted them in the yard, they have a very, the, the spears, when they're first coming out of the ground, they have a very asparagus-like taste, which if you like asparagus, I do, then you're going to love that. The leaves kind of have a, a taste like, just like a, a other green wood, maybe between a kale and a lettuce. It's not very strong. I'm sure as the season goes on, um, you know, by September, August, my big hostas right here where I'm at under the porch, they get to look be looking very ragged and they seem very thick. So I'm sure that they wouldn't be as tasty then as they are right now, fresh spring, you know, right when they're first emerging from the earth. But if you do a quick search on edible hostas, you will find out that in other countries they've been eating hostas for hundreds and hundreds of years uh, it's kind of one of their food sources and you'll also read you can read about different ways that people cook them um, people that um, even the different varieties like most of what I've found kind of seems like they're all edible and they're all parts of them are edible the flowers even although people say they don't taste 
they taste pretty much like nothing pretty bland but that all parts of them but you should definitely do your research your due diligence as they would say and find out for sure so you make sure that you're safe and probably the biggest thing that i um, come across about safety as far as eating hostas is kind of common sense is of course you wouldn't want to eat any that you didn't know what had been put on them you know if they've been sprayed with some kind of insecticide or pesticide or something like that uh, the ones in my yard not been sprayed with anything unless it was by a, a passing dog <laughs> that would be the the only thing that i would need to worry about so I'm going to get you closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing and kind of show you some of the different ones that are coming up. Now this long bed that I'm, I'm near, I'm squatted by, um, is kind of where our porch overhangs and as shade. So it's a very shady flower bed. Flowers is all I have in it, unless I want to start counting hostas as a, as a food source. And um, so they love the shade. So the ones here do very, very good. And one of the things I've read about was, of course, everybody wants to know, well, if you cut off the spears before they come out of the ground, will they come back? I mean, will they grow again? Well, things that I've read were uh, varying opinions on that. So if you know, if you have experience, you can for sure leave a comment and share it with us. But uh, on one hand, I have, mine are so large and so big and need to be divided that I'm not worried about damaging them, that part. But then also, many times, my hostas over the years, they'll be like about that big, maybe the little spear coming out of the ground. And what happens is we get a hard frost, like that last year, um, 2021 we had a really hard frost like May 10th I think it was well all of those hostas that were up they instantly turned to mush they're not they cannot stand frost so even though they're a perennial they cannot stand that hard frost so they instantly turn to mush but then in a you know and that kind of rots away and goes away and then in a few weeks they re-emerged and they come out and my hostas were just like they always are by the end of the summer so i'm thinking that they might re-emerge since I, over the years i've seen frost do that kind of um, make that little spear just into mush and then the hosta continues to come back out anyway either way i'll know after harvesting them so now i'm going to show you kind of what's in this bed so this is the beginning of the flower bed and right here some of those miniature hostas I was talking about. You see that lovely variegated edge, you see some little spring flowers and uh, even some dandelions back there. Right here, some more hostas because this end of the bed gets a lot of sun. They're kind of already beginning to leaf out. You can see that beautiful variegated. And then I have some, some tulips here, pretty. This is the bed that my Lenten roses are in, so they're just lovely. They start blooming sometimes even as early as December. I have this color and then a pink color, so pretty. So here's some of the hostas that are just beginning to come out of the ground that I was talking about that I may harvest. I'm gonna harvest either these or those out at the other end. But you can see even right here, I have quite a few and then as we continue on, here's those lovely pink, the pink Lenten roses, so lovely. And then even here, more hostas. Here's some up here just beginning to come up, those variegated ones. There's a clematis about coming up. More little hostas right there. More Lenten roses. This is an astabil. They are so lovely. They love the shade too. Another astabil. More hostas up here hiding behind the Lenten roses. This is some geraniums. Come from the same ant as my hostas and they've spread over the years. They have a really unique fragrance if you've never smelled them. They have a pink bloom. And here's more hostas. Spears coming up. More right here. And this is a daffodil that I don't even know how it got there. I didn't put it there. And I'm not sure it even bloomed this year because it don't get enough uh, sunshine right here. But surrounding it is more hostas. You can see the, the spears coming up. Here's another giant Lenten rose. 
and then right beside it, more hostas. And here's some of those little variegated ones. And these are like gold. You can see the kind of a gold tint to them. They're so pretty. That's probably my, this one, and there's a large gold one. Those are probably my favorites as far as what they look like. And then in the rest of the bed, all the way out to the end, you can see the hosta spears beginning to come up. It's just full of hostas. A few more Lenten roses and astabils in there, but lots of hostas. So as you can see, I have a ton of hostas in this one bed, but this is not all my hostas. I have them all over the yard in different places. I'll show you my row of miniature ones too in a moment. And there I'll show you the difference and how these are all tightly furled. And then when you see the difference in the miniature ones, it's because of where they're located up snug close to the house that they're already um, totally leafed out. But these are the ones that I'm gonna, I'm gonna harvest today. So here in the back of the house, you can see my miniature hostas, how they're already leafed out. It's because they get this direct sunlight and they're cozied up by the side of the house. But you can see all the different varieties. There's that kind of that gold tinted one that I love. This one's kind of pale green, very lovely. And I, I'm sure some of you probably know the names of all the different varieties, but I don't. There's a variegated one. This one kind of has long, skinnier leaves, kind of narrow leaves. You see how pretty it is. Another variegated one, some more gold, variegated. You can see a little violet growing there. And down here at the end, you can see these are, there's some wild violets there, but these are wild irises, little irises that grow wild. And I transplanted them just from the woods above the house to over here many years ago. And they come back every year. This one right here has got a bud. It's got a little bud, I can feel it. So it'll be bloomed within a week probably. One other little plant I wanted to show you along with the hostas here, you can see this little leaf. That's a blood root. Normally the blooms appear before the leaves. So I'm guessing this one's not gonna bloom this year. But it might, it might surprise me, but usually typically the blooms are like kind of like a little white daisy. They pop up and 
just seemingly overnight, like after a day or two, every petal just falls off all at once and they'll just be laying around it. And then these lovely uh, lobed leaves come out and they typically get pretty big, like as big as your hand. But this one's just a little, little tiny one that started there. And those are just wildflowers that grow in the mountains of Appalachia. Okay, so I got enough hosta spears to cook for supper. Um, I'm going to wash them, and then I'm going to taste one for you. Tastes so much like asparagus to me. Mm, a lot like asparagus. But I'm going to take them in and wash them. And since they do taste so much like asparagus, I'm going to fix them how I like to fix asparagus, which is roasted in the oven. So that's what I'm going to do with them. So once I come in, I took the hosta spears and I soaked them in some salt water because they are so curled up. Once I started looking inside, there was some dirt and maybe some bugs in there. So I soaked them for a few minutes in salt water and then I drained them and rinsed them well. And now I've got them, got them on a baking sheet and I'm just gonna drizzle them with some olive oil. And then I'm going to season them with some salt and pepper. And I'm going to, normally I would do asparagus in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes doing them like this. But since um, I just got my cornbread out, the oven is way hotter than that. So I'm just going to put them in there probably for about five minutes. As I said, I've been eating them raw and they taste really good like that. So just a quick roast I think will be, will be good. And then I'm going to make... <laughs> Matt and Katie taste them and see what they think about them, if they think they're as good as I do. So Matt's about to fix his plate. We've got stew beef and potatoes, cornbread, and the hosta shoots, hosta spears. Matt's wondering if they're going to kill him, but I don't think so. Tastes good? It's good. Tastes like asparagus? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Was like like they, were, they were just like asparagus. Gotta have some pickles with stew beef and cornbread. Mm, looks like a feast. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the hostas get really vibrant green. They weren't that green. It's funny how when you roast them, they got greener. See what you think about them. Could have fooled me. I thought I would have thought it was asparagus. It's amazing how much it tastes like asparagus, isn't it? Yeah, I really would have thought, except it doesn't look like asparagus, yeah. that it was asparagus. So now you can go foraging in the flower beds, not just in the yard. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad. And then when the leaves unfurl, then you could cook them like a, uh, like you would kale or do, I guess you could do kill lettuce or whatever with them if you wanted to. Pretty good. I like it. So I hope you enjoyed coming along as my first time actually cooking hostas. After I found out, as I said, that they were edible, I would munch on them in the yard. But this is the first time I've cooked them. Uh, and they turned out very well. I can't wait to actually use the leaves as I would kale, maybe saute them in a pan, put them in some soup, something like that. I do think as the season goes on, they would probably get tougher. So it'd probably be better to do it early in the spring. But if you have any experience eating hosta, foraging for hosta in your flower beds, please leave a comment and share what you know since we're just beginning to realize that this is a food source right around our house it's been growing here since my aunt gave me the plant so long ago uh, that we didn't really know about until i stumbled upon it like i said three or four maybe five years ago reading online kind of about foraging and things that you could that were edible outside 
but we've never really more than crunching it in the yard me they've never done that um, never really cooked it but I think this will be something from now on that I really utilize